Okay, here we go with our first major task in this journey into the CCIE practice exam. Our first task is going to be all about bringing up the internet backbone. There's seven routers that we need to work with in the internet backbone. They're all labeled starting with ISP hyphen something. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. This is going to be a major BGP assessment. So get ready. Let's get started with task number one, the internet network. All right, so without further ado, let's have some fun here and start bringing this lab to life. So what I'm going to focus on first is the internet section here. This is going to be ISPs 100, ISP 200, 300, 400 one 2, 3, and 4. Those are the ones that we want to bring to life first, so that way when we bring all of our branches to life, uh, all of them will have connectivity over the internet, and that simulates that way. Uh, as a quick refresher, this traffic will be sent outbound towards this NAT out router, which if you know, you've got it set up right in your environment. Um, this will actually send it outbound toward the actual internet. So our LAN devices will actually be able to simulate the internet when the time comes. So let's take a look at these lab tasks here. If I jump over to the left-hand side and choose lab tasks, uh, I'm focused on the internet network section first. And here's also what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring the consoles of these devices up by using Secure CRT. So when I give them a click here, it'll launch Secure CRT. And I'm going to do a little split screen action like this. Here we go. So I'll choose ISP 200, 300, oh, come on, 300, there we go, 400-1, 2, 3, and 4. Cool. So all of my consoles are up here. Let's start by just getting a little lay of the land. I'll do ISP 100, show IP interface brief. In fact, let's clean this up a little bit. I've got a little quick shortcut item here. So this is show IP interface brief, exclude unassigned and administratively down. So this just shows me all of the IP addresses that are assigned currently. The layout is like this. The 192.168s um, typically are going to be used for anything outside of the internet. So this is how our customers connect into the internet. It's also how we connect to the NAT outbound router too. Uh, the 17230s are going to be BGP neighbors if they're in a different autonomous system. So if we look at the topology here, let me move things around just a little bit so we can work with this a little bit better. Hit over a couple times. Great. So ISP 100 is going to have only eBGP neighbor relationships. Uh, so we think. We'll see what the tasks have in store for us. Um, same thing's going to be for ISP 200 because there's only, let's just take show IP. Actually, you know what? I've got that quick button here at the bottom. Let's just do that. So that way it's nice and easy and clean. There we go. So again, we've got the 17230s. So I see there's going to be three 17230s and then, of course, a loopback. Same thing with ISP 300. Oh, let's get into enable privilege mode. Takes a lay of the land there. Okay. Let's do this one, the 400s, just doing the lay of the land, get our feet a little settled here, take a look at the IP addresses, cool. Now notice here in the ISP 400s, we're going to be doing some IBGP relationships and some, some more configurations beyond that. So those internal BGPs are going to be 17231. If I also jump back to ISP 400-1, um, I say I've got the 192.168s. Again, that's so it can connect to, it looks like it's got two outbound connections to R9 and R8. So that's going to be uh, customer 1 and customer 2's routers. All right, let's take a look at ISP 400-3. Cool. There we go. I also see some outbound connections here for customer 1 and customer 2, and then the internal 172.31s. And let's give it this one a run. Okay, so now we've got a lay of the land. We've seen all of the IP addresses. Why wait any longer? Let's just start from the top. Configure BGP on all routers in the ISP network according to the following. So this task, so this internet network task is going to be almost exclusively BGP, uh, but that does not mean this is the only place that we will see BGP throughout this journey. We will absolutely see BGP again. It's just that the internet network section is going to be heavily focused on BGP. So let's get to it. ISP 100 should operate in ASN 100. So let's do router DGP 100. There we go. So that's operating in AS 100. 200 operates in 200. 300 operates in 300. So let's get that done. Config T, router BGP 200. Cool. ISP 300. Config T, router BGP 300. Cool. Now, ISP 400 should all operate in AS 400, but like so. 
ISP 400-1 and ISP 400-2 should participate in a confederation ASN 65005 and use authentication Cisco. Now, I believe that's 400-1 and 400-2 should authenticate to each other. 400-3 and 400-4 should participate in a confederation, the same confederation, but ASN 65006 and use authentication Cisco 1. All right, so we're doing a confederation here. Let's get it going. This is going to be router BGP for 400-1. We said that's 65,005. So they're going to be participating in the local autonomous system of 65,005 representing ASN 400 as part of the confederation. So let's say BGP confederation identifier is going to be 400 and BGP confederation peers we're expecting to be 65,006. Okay. Same thing's going to be on ISP 400-2. So I'm going to give this a do show run section BGP and just copy and paste. Very cool. Here we go. Config T, paste it in. There we go. So now my confederation is set up for 65,005. Uh, we also need to configure the neighbor relationship between these two such that it uses authentication. So let's say neighbor. This was going to be... Do we want to do this by loopbacks? We probably do want to do this by loopbacks, don't we? Okay, so the loopback address on 400-2 is 142, 142, 142, 142. And the issue that I have here, just looking at this, is that these don't have, oh, nope, do show IP route. These don't have routes to each other. So let's do this in order to make this happen. Let's just make this come to life real quick by saying router OSPF1. Let's just run OSPF between all of the devices in ISP 400. So I'm gonna say router OSPF1 network. We need to turn the network on for one of these commands. Let's do 172, 31, 41.0. These are all 24-bit masks in this area, or in this uh, topology. And this was 43. Cool. If I jump back over here, go back out of BGP configuration real quick. OSPF1 network 172.31.41.0. This was area zero. That'll bring that to life real quick. And 24. That'll bring that to life real quick. Let's bring these to life with the OSPF real quick. Network 172.31.34.0. Zero. Zero. And 43. Cool. Router OSPF1. Network 172.31.34.0. Area zero. And 24 here. Okay, so if I get this to do show IP OSPF interface brief, let's verify that those are participating here. And do show IP OSPF neighbors. We're in a druther state, which means it might be coming to life. Looks like I'm getting some full adjacencies over here. Now we need to get those loopbacks into OSPF so that uh, we can make our BGP neighbor relationships based on the loopback addresses. So let's get those loopbacks in. And I'm going to do a network state instead of like a redistribute connected because actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it that way. Okay, 141. Uh, let's do 0000, area 0. Over here, I'm going to do network 142. Zero, 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 area zero. Let's jump over here. Network 143. Ah! Hit enter too many times. 143, 143, 143. Zero, 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 area zero. Why can't I type? There we go. And ISP 400. Network 144. Zero, 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 zero. <laughs> I always forget that wildcard mask. All right, so at this point, let's do a do show IP uh, route OSPF. Cool, I'm starting to see, okay, I got all the loopbacks in. So at this point, I can start building my BGP relationships. 
So I'll go back into BGP. This is 65,005 on ISP 400-1. Just making sure y'all can see me okay. Yeah, okay, we're good. Um, and I'm gonna say neighbor is going to be, we were gonna do authentication for between uh, ISP 400-1 and ISP 400-2 and a different password between 400-3 and 400-4. So I'll say 142, 142, 142, 142. Remote AS is gonna be 65,005. We're gonna do update so that it's peered based on the loopback address. And let's throw in that password, shall we? Password was all caps Cisco. Let's bring this BGP relationship to life over here. And we're going to say new, nope, 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 nope. Got to be in BGP, 65,005. And we got our neighbor statement, 141, 141, 141, 141. Remote AS, 65,005. Update source loopback. Okay, and lastly, the password. Let's let it sit for a second and just verify that this comes to life. Come on, baby. Give me a BGP relationship to your debug. BGP IPv4 unicast, is that it? All right, I think that's a good sign. Do show BGP IPv4 unicast summary. Okay, we've got an up, no prefixes received because we're not advertising any prefixes into BGP at this time. Uh, but it looks like everything is doing good. Do undebug all. Oop. All. There we go. Cool. Debugging's turned off. So the relationship between 400-1 and 400-2 is brought to life. So we've got that one checked off. Let's bring up 400-3 and 400-4. So let's exit out of this. Router BGP. This is 65,006. And this is now going to be our neighbor statement of 144.144.144.144 .144 remote AS. It's going to be our remote AS because this is an internal BGP session. We're going to do the update source loopback. And we need to do a password. This was password Cisco1. Cool. All right, let's do this guy over here, which is going to be ISP 400-4. Router BGP 65006. Neighbor 143. 143, 143.143. Remote AS is our AS because it's internal. Update source loopback and password is Cisco1. Let's do, do debug BGP IPv4 unicast. Watch come to life. Come on, baby. Looking good. Adjacency is up. We've got the little ADJ change neighbor status of up. Right, give me one second. Sorry, I mute this. This keeps going off. All right. Um, there we go. Silent mode. Sorry about that. Okay. Now we've got the BGP relationship between 400 uh, between within the local autonomous system. Now we need to get that outside of the local autonomous system, but still within the confederation. So this is going to be peers between 65,005 and 65,000 and six. So this is going to be ISP 400-1 over here to 400-3 and ISP 400-2 to ISP 400-4. So on this side, we're going to say neighbor 143.143.143.143. Remote autonomous system 65,006. Update source. Loopback zero. There's no authentication requirement here. Uh, so I'm not worried about it. Let me do a do undebug all here. There we go. Okay. Um, neighbor 141, which is the loopback address of 400-1. Remote autonomous system, 65,005. Update source. Enter too many times there. Update source, loopback zero. Okay. So that should bring that relationship to life. Let's do 400-2. And 400-4, here we go. So neighbor statement here, the autonomous system, 65,006. Update source, loopback zero, cool. 
and in the other direction, neighbor, 142. 142, nope, Thomas says 65,000, and nope, there, 65,005, and update source, loopback zero. Okay. Just let everything come to life to Active open failed. No route to peer. No route. Do show IP route OSPF. What's up with that? You definitely have a route to peer, buddy. No route to peer. Do ping 142, 142, 142, 142, source loopback zero. Okay, well, we definitely have connectivity. Um, okay, do show run, section BGP, where did I go wrong? Do show BGP, IPv4 unicast, nope, summary. We definitely have not established a connection for 142. Oh, I didn't configure the confederation. Duh. Okay. Um, BGP confederation identifier 400 BGP confederation peers 65,005. And did I do the same thing here? Do show run. Bet I didn't. Section BGP. Y'all. Confederation Identifier 400, BGP Confederation Peers 65,005. Still says no route to peer. To show run section BGP. Okay. I mean, I did type this right, and it does have a route because I can ping it. So do show run section BGP, do show IP route. Okay. So not only does router three here see the route to router two through one and three. So this is, this is some tomfoolery here. Do show IP route. It learns the route via OSPF. Okay. Active open field. Okay, let's see what's going on over here. Do show run section BGP. Sixty-five thousand and six. Update source loop back zero. Do show run section BGP 65,005 update source loop back zero. Do show IP route. Do ping 144.144.144.144 source from loop back zero. Round trip traffic, but this guy says there is no route for 142. Okay, let's do this. No, just wipe these out real quick. Try it again. Make sure I'm in the PGP configuration. Yeah, okay. Neighbor is 142, 142, 142, 142. The remote autonomous system is 65,005. Neighbor, 142, 142, 142, 142. Update source, loopback zero. Oh, do I not have a loopback? 
do I have a loop back? Active open failed, no route to peer. Why do you think you have no route to peer? Let's try this because this is going from, even though this is part of the confederation, uh, this is going from loopback to loopback, so it could behave like an eBGP. So let's do this. Let's do eBGP. Nope, that's not it. It is the eBGP multi hop. Let's do neighbor 142, 142, 142, 142. eBGP multi hop. Let's give it a five. And let's do the same thing on the other direction. Neighbor 144, 144, 144, 144, EBGP multi-hop. Give it a five. Let's see what happens. Ah, look at that. Yep, it, okay. So because we were peering between autonomous systems, even though they're within the same confederation, it still behaves like an EBGP relationship, so we have to have multi-hop. So that means the same thing is going to be true over here between 1 and 3, and I see that relationship never came up either. So 143.143.143.143, nope, 3, EBGP multi-hop, 5, just, you know, give myself some padding. It doesn't specify anything like that. Neighbor, 141.140, nope, this is 2. Don't need to do that in 2. We do this on 3. Neighbor 141.141.141.141 EBGB multi op 5. And let's give it a second. There we go. Neighbor adjacency is up. Okay, so now I have my adjacency for autonomous system 400 up. Next step is step five form EBGP relationships between directly connected neighbors in different autonomous systems. So eBGP relationships are going to be from 400 to 200, 400 2 to 300, 400 4 to 200, 400 4 to 300, 300 to 100, and 200 to 100. So let's actually start from 100 and work our way out. So we're going to go into router BGP 100. Neighbor is going to be, in this case, we actually need to see what our IP addresses are. Do show IP interface brief. Okay, our first neighbor adjacency is going to be 172.30. 200 is going to be for autonomous system 200. The remote autonomous system is going to be 200. Neighbor adjacency here for the 103 is going to be between 100 and 300. So I just use 103 right there. 103.30, I think is what I set him at. We'll verify that. Okay, so that's going to be ISP 100's neighbor adjacency statements. Let's do... ISP 200, BGP 200. Let's bring up 100 first, 172.30.200.100. Remote autonomous system is 100. Let's bring up now, we're connecting to 400-2 and 400-4. I have no idea what those IP addresses are. Okay. 172.30.42. something. No, <laughs> hiccups, gotta look. Uh, let's see. So we've got 172.30.42 is going to be 400-2. Okay, 42 is 400-2, which is dot 20. 20. Autonomous system is 400. Uh-oh. Cannot configure the local system as neighbor because I am looking at the wrong IP address. So this is 400-2. 24, oh, 42-40. I was looking at the 31s, of course. Yeah, I did that on purpose. I'm tricking myself up. I even said, like, I'm going to do this to trick myself, and that is exactly what happened. So uh, if that one, then this one is going to be 24.40. Okay, so then on this side, I will say neighbor 172.30.42.20. Autonomous system is 200. And over here, we'll say neighbor 
let's do do show IP interface brief. Do show IP interface brief, so I'll take a look. Okay, neighbor is 172.30.24.20. Compote autonomous system is gonna be 200. So this should bring my eBGP relationships up. There they go, they came up to life right there. And from ISP 200's perspective, do show BGP IPv4 unicast. Summary, because we don't have any prefixes advertised yet. Okay, I see my three eBGP relationships for ISP 200 are now brought to life. Uh, everything shows in the upstate with the timer kicking there. So let's move on to ISP 300. Let's give it a show IP interface brief because I can already tell I'm going to need it. Router BGP 300. Neighbor, let's bring up the relationship to ISP 100 first. Dot 100, remote autonomous system 100. Neighbor 172.30.43.40 and then 34.40. Cool. So from 400 2, neighbor 172.30.43.30, remote autonomous system 300, and from 400 4, do okay, let's just do undebug all. Do undebug all. Okay. Do show IP interface brief. Neighbor is going to be 172.30.34.30. Remote autonomous system is 300. Okay. Do show BGP IPv4 unicast summary. And I see all of my relationships are alive here. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so step five is done. Form eBGP relationships between all directly connected neighbors in different autonomous systems. So an ISP 300 should check that neighbors are only one hop away. So that's going to be the TTL statements. Let's see, is this a neighbor statement? I believe it is. Neighbor 172.30.103.100 TTL security. Um, hops, let's just say, you know, I, I know it says one hop away. I just, I feel like I should say it needs to, just in case, you know, okay, fine, 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 fine. You win, one hop. Um, one hop away, 30.43 and 40 and 34. So we're checking the TTL on these that we should be receiving that, um, they are only one hop away. Uh, so this is checking um, that the TTL on these that comes in is going to be one hop away. Cool. Advertise all loopbacks into BGP. All right. So let's do this. It doesn't say how. We could do a redistribute connected. We could also do network statements. Um, in fact, I am, you know what, just to make things easy on me, since it doesn't specify, I am going to do a redistribute connected on any of the ISPs that have uh, my endpoints, my, my customer endpoints connected to them. So that way it also brings in those and I don't have to do so many network statements there. I think it's really clustered. Uh, so let's do, should I go into IP address family redistribute connected? Cool. So we're bringing in the connected routes into the IPv4 unicast address family on 400-1. I also see uh, 400-3 is going to do some redistribution because I have the customer addresses here, redistribute connected. Um, and then I have ISP 100, which also has some customer routes that I'm going to bring in, redistribute connected. Now, something that I'm expecting to have a problem with here is the confederation items here. There's probably going to need to be some next hop self, uh, otherwise some routes are not going to be resolvable. Uh, but I also need to do network statements on ISP 200, 300, 402, and 404. So let's do network. What is the loop back here? 130? Okay. Network 130.130.130.130. Mask 255, 255. This is on ISP 300. Cool. Looking good there. 200, we need to do the same thing. This is 140. Nope, this is 400 2. We need to go to ISP 200. Do show IP interface brief network statement 120. 120, 120, 120. Mask 255. 
Cool. And then we have 400-2 and 400-4. Okay, so I was on the right one after all, 142, 142, 142, mask, 255, 255, 255, 255, 255 and 400-4, 144, 144, 144, 144, mask, 255, 255, 255, 255. Now my hunch, like I said, was that we're going to have some next top self problems. Um, for routes, so in this case, I'm looking at like ISP 300. It's gonna be advertising its loop back over here to 400-2 and 400-4. My expectation is that 400-3 won't know how to reach that. Um, so let's let's just check it out. Oh, look at that. Something just changed there. Ah, 30 went down probably because of the TTL, didn't it? Probably because of the TTL. Let's fix that. Probably needed that TTL statement to go in two directions, don't you think? So let's say 172.30.34.30 TTL security hops one. And neighbor 17.30.43.30 TTL security hops one. And here come the relationships one more time. Let's fix ISP 102, 172.30.103.30, TTL. Uh, oh, I'm in the address family. So the issue here is that the TTL security has to be in two directions. Um, the hold timer on BGP was three minutes, so three minutes just passed, and they probably dropped out uh, because the hold timer was not because the TTL security, the hops were not matching on both sides. They hadn't agreed on that security feature yet, uh, but the relationships are coming back now that I've set it up to be in two directions. So like I was saying, I'm expecting three, ISP 300 to advertise its loopback into ISP 400, but the, uh, the distant routers won't be able to receive it. So let's verify that real quick. I'm gonna look at do show BGP IPv4 unicast, and let's see. So that was 130, 130, 130, 130, and sure enough, I don't know how to get there because this next hop is the path to ISP 300, and I haven't learned about that route uh, via OSPF or via um, BGP. So I can either advertise this into BGP or, which is, you know what, I probably should just advertise all of these links into BGP. I probably should just do redistribute connected everywhere, actually. Uh, that way, every router knows about every path within the environment. Do I? Let me look ahead and make sure I don't have any. Oh, look at that! I do have some some things. Advertise all routes into BGP. <laughs> well, there you go. ASN 400 should show. ASN 400 routes should show incomplete. So there's redistribution. All of the routes should show an origination of I. So should have done network statements on ISP 100 and redistribute connected is what we need to do on all of the items in ISP 400. So without further ado, let's just get that going. ISP in for just redistribute connected. Cool. And let's do this on two. Address family IPv4 unicast, redistribute connected. Cool. Now that that's done, I can go over here now to 400-3, press up. And sure enough, now I can actually get to the 130. I now actually have a little carrot here showing that I have a best path forward. And it does show as originating internally. Uh, now this one is showing, this is ISP 100's loopback. It's showing as incomplete. We do need to fix that because it says all other routes should show an origination of I. So let's do this. Do show run section BGP. And let's wipe out my address family IPv4 unicast and no redistribute connected exit now we have to do all these network statements man why did I do this to myself okay um, okay lots of network statements oh, gotta go network statements are in IPv4 unicast there we go network all right 192.168.198.0 Mask 255, they're all 24-bit masks. 
so keep it easy, at least in that regard. Seven. Now, jumping ahead, I see I've got one in 10 and 11. So 10, 11. Now let's do the 172.30s. 172.30.103.0. 200. And lastly, the loopback. 100, 100.100.100. .100 Wipe out this guy here. Cool. So if I now jump back, let's see what we got. Looking a lot better. Looking a lot, I think we have now accomplished our goal. All right, cool. Um, so that knocks out seven and eight. ISP 400-1's loop bag should not be advertised outside of ASN 400. So there's a few ways you could do that. Uh, you could do a route map that filters it out. Um, or the easier way is actually going to be BGP communities. So let's do this. Let's say time to start sending some communities. Do show run section BGP. Cool. Tackle my first neighbor, 142.142.142.142. Send community, both. And 143. Cool. Let's do, got to forward these communities on throughout the topology. Section BGP. Neighbor. 144.144.144.144. Send community. Eh. Was that an address family that you do that? Must be. Neighbor. 144.144.144.144. Send community. Yep. Both. Cool. We'll send it back to 141 just for good measure. And for cleanliness sake. 400-3. Show run. Section BGP. Neighbor. 141, 141, 141, 141. Send community both. And 144. And lastly, we're going to do this coming back this way. 143, 143, 143. Send community both. And 142 is who we needed. Cool. So now we're sending the communities. Now we actually need to set a community. So let's do a route map, a prefix list, and a route map. OK, IP prefix list. Uh, what am I going to call this prefix list? Let's call this 400-1 loop uh, sequence 5 permit and the Prefix is 141, 141, 141, 141 slash 32. Uh, let's make our route map that matches it. Route map. Hmm. What's a clever name to call this? Uh, loop column for community string. I don't know. I'm not good at names, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Match IP address prefix. And let's just grab this right here. Cool. Set community. Okay, let's take a look at our options so we can see. We want to do no export. Do not export to the next autonomous system because um, we do want to keep it within advertise. We do want it to go outside of this autonomous system. Uh, so we're going to export it out of our autonomous system and into um, the confederation peer system, but it won't go outside of that. So let's do no export. And now we're going to set our new neighbor statements. Router BGP uh, 65005. And now our neighbor statement 143, 143, 143, 143. Route map. Nope, not remote. Ah, is that in the address family? route map and what do we call that route map loop com 
Nope, out. You know what I did? That route map has a implicit deny all. So we need to fix that, don't we? Route map loop com sequence 20 permit. Yeah. Permit 20. There we go. Show route map. Okay. So at this point, let's see. Do you show BGP IPv4 unicast. Okay, we still are receiving 141, 141, 141, 141, which is cool. Um, but now, if I do show B, actually, let's just do show IP route BGP. Still have 141 there. Let's do clear BGP IPv4 unicast star. Let's just bounce them all. Actually, I wonder if that... Hmm. I think it might actually be that we didn't want that sequence 20. No route map. Loop. Com. Permit. 20. Do show route map. Do clear BGP IPv4 unicast. Oh, not parentheses. Bounce them all again. Okay. Okay, still receiving it here. From ISP 200's perspective. Meh. Let's bounce this. Do clear BGP IPv4 unicast star. And do clear BGP IPv4 unicast star. Because I just don't want to wait. <laughs> nope. Still sending it outbound. show BGP IPv4 unicast 141, 141, 141, 141. I don't see the community being set here. Is this because we redistributed this? Yes. Yeah, actually, PGP 1005, trust family, IPv4, unicast, network 141, 141, 141, 141, mask 255, 255, 255, 255. I am going to set that route map back to have a permit statement. Map. Was it loopcom? Show BGP IPv4 unicast Might be something wrong with that prefix list. So this list 
standard root ACL permit host. ACLs by name this. Bounce the neighbors. Ah, it's looking better not advertised to any peer. Not advertised to any peer. No best path available, though. That is peculiar. You know why? I think we're looking good. Cool. Let's now check over here. No, still got it. So here we've got the community of no exports set. Here we've got the community not set. Learn from router two. So let's do do clear BGP IPv4 unicast call. Let's bounce the session. Back on. Looking better. Okay, cool. Now, from this point of view, if I do do clear BGP IPv4 unicast star, bounce the session. No more 141. But no more 140s anyway. route map there we go just took a moment just took a moment to resync <laughs> Everything's okay. Just took a moment to resync, and we're all good here. I almost have me freaking out. Okay. All right. Should not be advertised outside. Okay, so 9 is done. Configure ISP 300 to only advertise its loopback to ISP 400-4. So we want ISP 300 to only send its loopback outbound towards 400-4. We're not going to send it towards ISP 100, and we're not going to send it outbound towards ISP 400-2. Well, that's pretty simple to do. There's no really 
struggle here, we can just use a route map that stops the advertisement in that direction. So let's do configure, let's do IP access list standard. Uh, let's call this loop, something simple like that. Permit host and our loopback was to show IP interface brief, permit 130. 130.130.130. Let's create the route map. Route map, when in doubt, make a route map. Let's call it stop loop. Permit 10, match. No, 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 not permit 10. Deny 10. Match IP address. What do we call that? Loop. And then we'll do route map, stop loop. Permit 20. So if I do do show route map, I see that my first set is going to stop the advertisement of the loopback. The second one is going to permit the advertisement of everything else. So exit a route map config, router BGP 300. Uh, my neighbor towards 400 2. What is neighbor towards 400 2? Do show IP interface brief 43. So, oh, mouse. Address family IPv4 Unicast. My neighbor statement is 172.30.43.40. Route map was stop loop. Out. And the same thing was 103.100. Okay. Do clear BGP IP list because I'm just bouncing them. I'm just clearing them at this point. I don't want to wait for all these things to sync up, so we're just going to reset them all. Um, so at this point, I stopped the advertisement towards ICE. Let's just see on ISP 100. Show BGP IPv4 unicast. So that was 130. We are learning 130 via 200, um, which is Probably good because it learned it from 400, who related to 200, and so on. So, if I actually check out 200, show BGP IPv4 unicast. I'm learning. I'm done. I don't even have 130. So we're just waiting for it to expire at this point on 100's point of view. Cool. So that looks good. Uh, all right, moving on. So 300 advertises its loopback to only 400-4. The next step is configure BGP such that ISP 400-4 does not advertise that loopback outside of the local autonomous system. So let's do that. Exit, exit. We're going to create an access list. Standard, let's call it um, 300 loop, something like that. Invalid access list name, 300 loop, maybe? No, OK, because it wants to be loop 300. Um, all right, permit post 130, 130, 130, 130. Route map, let's call it just loop 300 again. Permit 10, match IP address, loop 300, set community. This is going to be no advertise. Just don't advertise it outside of our local autonomous system. Um, cool. And then we're going to say a everything else goes. So route map loop 300 permit 20. Cool. And now we're going to go back into router BGP 65006. My neighbor over here is 143. Nope, this has to be done. Route maps have to be done in the address family mode. Okay, route map. Nope, not route map. <laughs> it's getting towards the end. Hang in there. <laughs> 143, 143, 143, 143, route map. And what was that called? Loop 300? Cool. Nope, out. Okay. All right, so now we get fun. Configure ISP 100 to propagate a default route. Does ISP 100 have a default route? ISP 
it does have a default route. Can I ping the internet and such? Sure can. So let's propagate this default route. Okay, two ways to do this. You have to have a couple commands to make this happen. BGP 100. First is a default information. Is that in address family mode? Information originate. Second is a redistribute static. Okay. That should do the trick. We have default information originate as well as redistribute static. It is a static default route. So that should do the trick. In just a moment, I should start seeing, there it is, default route is being learned this way. Can I ping? There we go. So ISP 200 can now reach the internet thanks to that default route. Configure ASN 400 such that traffic entering ASN 400 will enter through ASN 400-4. So we need to make 400-2 look less attractive somehow, maybe by like prepending an additional uh, autonomous system hop to the end of it. So let's do routes that we're advertising destined this way should be coming out of 400-2, should have extra autonomous system hops. So to do that, we need to do an AS path ACL. And I always forget this part. Let's just give it a number. Permit and our regular exposure. So routes that originate from us, caret dollar sign. That's how we do that. And we are going to be using a route map to append autonomous system hops to the end of that. So route map, we'll call this prepend, not append. That's what I should have said. Prepend. Um, permit. And we will say match AS path one. That's it, match AS path one. And then we will say set, and that's gonna be AS path, right? AS path, prepend, and then however many autonomous systems. Let's just three or something like that. Let's now do the rest of them. We're gonna do a route map. We call this prepend, right? Permit 20, okay. All good there. Now we need to advertise those additional hops to ISP 200 and 300. So let's go back into config T, router of BGP, 65,005, address family, IPv4 unicast. Neighbors, this direction, what was 200? Let's, uh, shoot, I'll never remember that to show IP interface brief. Okay. Uh, neighbor, 172.30.42.20, route map, prepend. Out, out, always forget the out, always forget the out. This is going to be 43.30, prepend out. So now the routes originating from 400-2 will look like it has to go through 400 three times. Okay, uh, configure ASN 200 and 300 to summarize ASN 400's loopbacks as they are advertised to ASN 100. So that's the 141s through a 140 fours. So we're trying to do the aggregate address command, but not on ISP 100 Knox. We're doing it on 200 and 300. Take two router BGP 200 address family IPv4 unicast the aggregate address command and it wants to know what the address is. So let's say I did 128.0.0.0. What would the mask be that would encompass 144? Actually, we could do something more specific than that. Uh, let's think, 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 think. Uh, 128, 32, 38, plus 8. So 138, 000, 000. And then a 8-bit block size would put me up to 146. So that would be 54, 52... Forty, no. Two fifty-four, two fifty-two, two forty-eight, right? Two, four, eight. Yeah, I think this is it. Um. 
don't have any other parameters at this point. Well, that's not going to work, is it? Okay, doesn't like that. Um, okay, think. Okay, because it's 8 bit block size. So, <laughs> math 128. 136. Nope, that wouldn't work because that would go up to 144. So, it's got to be 128. And that would need to be a 32 bit size to reach over 144 because the 16 bit size would stop at 144. So, the 32 bit size, 8, 40, 224. Okay. And this is what also needs to be on. ISP 300. So we should, after a while, start filtering those out into the summary addresses. Just bounce it. Let it all sync up. While it's thinking about that, we'll come back to this. Create the summary such that ISP 400-2's loopback is accessed through ISP 300. So ISP 300 is going to have to leak ISP 400-2's loopback, which is 142.142.142. So let's look at ISP 300 here for a second. Do I have a route? Yep, I have a specific route to 142.142.142. So I can create a route map that leaks that out. Let's do this. IP access list standard. Uh, let's, it's actually an unsuppress, I keep saying. So let's just call it unsuppress. I'm not even sure if I'm spelling unsuppress right. I don't care. <laughs> They're not going to judge me for spelling on the exam, I hope. Uh, 142, 142, 142, 142. Cool. Exit. Route map. Unsuppress. Uh, I'm never going to spell that right. Match IP address unsuppress. Yeah, that's really all we need to do on that case. Um, router BGP 300. Router BGP 300. This is going to go into address. I'm pretty sure you have to do the unsuppressed map on the neighbor statement. Ah, yes. Okay. So now ISP 300 should be Advertising 142.142.142 outbound. Perform a soft reset outbound from 300 to 100. Clear BGP IPv4 unicast 172.30.103.100 soft outbound. That should do the trick. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. I think we've just about accomplished all of our goals here. It's a lot of goals. Did a lot of good work today. A lot of fun. Just curious about this aggregate address. Oh, you know what I did? The aggregate address. That's not going to work. Summary only. Ah! There we go. 
I knew I was missing something. It was still sending those more specific prefixes. We're out of BGP 300. There's family IPv4 Unicas. Where's that aggregate address command? There you are. There. Okay. Bounce them all one more time. Now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's let it sync up. Find its feet. There we go. I love it. There's the summary address. There's the more specific prefix coming in. I love it. This makes me happy. This is great. Cool. So that's it. That summarizes our first task there. Bringing the internet network to life really took our BGP skills up a notch. Uh, so that's it. That's it for the first one. In the next one, what we are going to work on is the MPLS network. We're not going to bring Layer 3 VPN to life. Uh, we're just going to bring the network to life. And then we're going to bring the customer sites to life. And then we'll bring the MPLS Layer 3 VPN and DM DMVPN to life after that. So that's it. That's it for me. That's it for the first task here, bringing the internet network to life. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you in the next one.